Hey guys, what's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite adventures. And today I'm going to not really go on an adventure, but go to somewhere that I've been wanting to go for a little while. And, um... That, that's weird. Um, and, um... That place is the Hong Kong Film Archive, which is surprisingly close to my own apartment. So, um, yeah, how do I call myself a Hong Konger cinephile if I don't even visit the Hong Kong Film Archive? So, you know what, today I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna be, like, doing things. I actually haven't done a lot of research on what goes on inside there. And also, originally, I wanted to go there in October, but throughout the entire October, the Film Archive building was closed for repairs but now it's November it's open again so uh, I can go now which is very exciting so uh, yeah I'm just gonna go there a quick walk and then I'm gonna come back home it's gonna be great uh, time now is about 4 27 p.m. so I'm a little bit late the archive building closes at 7 p.m. so I gotta hurry and since uh, the archive building is so close to my own apartment and I've already filmed a couple videos showing my district around so uh, I won't be filming too much uh, of my path walking towards there so uh, yeah all right so right now I have arrived at the outskirts of Sai Wan Ho this is a place that I always go to not really always but this is a familiar territory for me so nothing interesting going on One really notable place, however, is that building over there. That building is the Saiwan Ho Sports Center, and I hold a grudge with this place. So around 7 to 8 years ago, I used to play badminton every Friday night as a part of a badminton course that is outside of my school. And this badminton course is exactly the fucking reason why I entered my edgy phase at around the age of 11 or I think 12 right here this is the sports uh, sports stadium uh, Saiwan Ho Sports Stadium I don't know what the fuck what the fuck's going on there what the what's Some sort of kung fu practice. I don't know why they're holding a bunch of bamboos waving around, but it looks like kung fu to me. <sighs> but yeah, before before entering the uh, film archive, which is right here, let's take a tiny trip down memory lane. Now there are actually two sports stadiums around here. Uh, this is actually not called the Saiwan Ho, this is actually Island East. The Saiwan Ho one is all the way over there. But this one's worse. Yeah, I don't think I'll be going here. There's also a swimming pool here. And um, I've been there too. Alright, let's go to let's go to the building next door. Hong Kong Film Archive. This is exactly where I want to be. Right. I feel like I look like a total idiot right here because I, I've been here before. But um, the last time I've been here, it's been like many, many years ago. Oh, wait, I can't film? Crap, can I not film? I don't know if I can film or not. But I, I got this thing. And um, it's got a bunch of, it's got a bunch of um, films in it. A lot of really old films, but important films nonetheless. Okay, some newer films. Oh, here we go. This one right here, Zhong Lito, directed by King Hu in the 1970s. 
Oh hey, center stage, director's cut. The Killers by John Woo. No, Bullet in the Head by John Woo, not The Killers. Um, all right, I feel like I can't go in. I, I feel like I can't film in there. Okay. So, um, okay, we have a camera here. Let's go up. Before we go into that big room, let's go up and see what kind of stuff awaits. Now, uh, I'm gonna be honest here, I am not an expert in Hong Kong film history. I know a little more than the average person, but only a little bit. This is the first Hong Kong film classified as category three, right? I watched um, a little bit of um, a little bit of a video about category three, basically R18, but in Hong Kong the R18 grading and um, I'm pretty sure this is not the one <laughs> pretty sure this is not the one all right again I haven't done any research I mean I did a little research but I didn't do a lot of research so I kind of don't know okay um, earlier this year I wanted to watch a movie called um, um Chuck Top Sai Guy and it is directed by this dude Mo Hansi. But that video is taken down from YouTube, so I don't know where to watch it now. We got some 70s um 70s stuff over here. Um Okay, this film man, this film is one of the lowest rated Hong Kong films in Letterbox because it is basically um um uh <laughs> Charlie Chaplin, but Hong Kong version, which is very stupid. This is a, oh, The Imp, 1983, The Imp. I watched this. So this is a, about the new wave of uh, 80s horror films in Hong Kong. Yeah, right here, The Imp. As you can see, there are also a bunch of 80s horror films, late 70s horror films that I haven't watched. Um, Dangerous Encounter First Kind. I believe this is, um, I, I forgot who directed this, but um, it's a very famous director. I think it's um, John Wu also? Oh, no, 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 Choi uh, Huck, I think. So uh, yeah, new wave, new wave stuff, really cool. 2017, bro, that's a long time ago. Period films, I like period films, I really do. All right, we got Maggie Wu right here. Um, also about period films. Qi Pao, or Cheng uh, Sam, which basically means traditional Chinese clothing um, in the um, early 1900s, early 20th century Chinese clothing. And then right here we have <laughs> when Leslie met Anita. Leslie is in Leslie Zheng, Zheng Guokwing, and Anita Mui, which means um, Mu Yin Fong, and both of them had passed away in the year 2003. And the opening film is Rouge, Yin Zi Kao, which is one of my favorite films of Hong Kong. Absolutely fantastic film. All right, we have um, some film history over here. We got um, Bruce Lee, um, uh, Wu Yu Tek Wu Si by Anne Ho. That is the first film in the uh, trilogy of films that Anne Ho made about Vietnamese refugees. Um, let's see, what other things do I know? Hey, that's Cao Yun Fat, I know who he is. Um, oh, this is the history of the museum, not really the history of Hong Kong film. Okay, there we go. Cinema Resource Center office. I feel like I, I wish I have a bag to put this thing in. Okay. So I believe this is the first floor and um Okay, it's a cinema over there, so...
yeah all right i guess there's not much else to see in this in this particular place i guess there really isn't much but yeah a lot of a lot of cool history stuff again the new wave in the early 80s and late 70s Yang Hong Bunsek A Better Tomorrow 1986 I'm still trying to look for the 1967 version though written uh, directed by Long Gong not necessarily written All right There really isn't much to talk about to be honest Aha, uh Faimok. -huh. Faimok is one of the most important directors in early Hong Kong film. And um, have I seen any of this? I don't think I have. Right, but right here we have uh, Evan Yang Yikman. And earlier this month, I reviewed um, a movie called Mambo Girl, also directed by Evan Yang. All right, I'm all the way down here again. Great stuff. Okay. okay, so apparently this place, the resource center, opens until 5 p.m., which is 12 minutes from now. <laughs> Okay, let's see if I can find any film I know, right here. Chungking Express, I know that film. Apparently, so apparently I can't film anything on the third floor and I don't, I'm not sure if I can film anything right here either, but I just saw a couple people taking a photo, so I guess maybe it's possible? I don't know. So um, I'm just going to keep a low profile and try to be as discreet as possible. But uh, this is probably the main course of the entire museum. Photographer's pick. Okay, some photos. Some Sam Taibo, the heroic ones. Boon Yek. Right here. We even have a wall right here, which is dedicated to recent films. This is uh, Liu Kaiji, rest in peace. Story of Rikkyo, the hyper-violent action film. I don't know a lot of horror films in Hong Kong, so it's weird that I've never actually heard about this film. Yao Leng Dang Gan. Chen Tian Fa Fa Tong. Except it's real. Oh, it's, it's a bunch of celebrities but made younger. I see. God damn it, not this stupid movie. I reviewed this movie earlier today. Not this stupid movie.
果都其實而家你想浸時，想即係嚟緊呢個。I feel like I'm walking in reverse the whole time. Looks pretty interesting. Nostalgic for some 60s, 50s stuff. A typical 60s Hong Kong film poster is like this usually. Dial 999 for three murderers? The fuck? This is some hyper noir stuff, you know? Neo noir. I feel like I need to write down a list of films I want to watch. This looks pretty interesting. I kind of want to watch it. Shadow of Tear. <laughs> so. Nineteen thirty five. Oh, my God. Master Key of Film Promotion. The whole museum is about film promotion anyways. Okay. Interesting, interesting. 1940. 1930. There's a QR code here. I'm gonna skip. No way. A Western? Made in Hong Kong? What? A Hong Kong film that completely takes place in the USA. This is the oldest one I can find, 1926. This looks like, even though it's from 1926, this looks like it's from 1898 or something. It, it looks like a, a photo that the Lumiere brothers could have taken. You know, around this time, they made Napoleon, so, Obviously, Hong Kong wasn't so technologically advanced back then. Nearly a hundred years ago. 95 years ago, to be exact. 95. Oh my god, I need to watch this. I need to watch this. Man. A lot of good books. This one is about Zhang Qi. This one is about Chou Yu. A lot of good books in this book corner. All right, so time now is about 3.32 p.m. 
I um, spent well over an hour, about an hour here. Pretty good, pretty wholesome experience. I couldn't film on the third floor in the library, but honestly, there wasn't much to see. It's just a bunch of books and people using their like laptops there and studying there. Like you can't even watch movies there. Like that totally defeats the purpose of this building. Is the film archive. The real film archive is at Hong Kong University Library. Like earlier, I think a month ago, I spoke to Mr. P and asked him where can I watch the 1967 version of Yang Hong Bun, directed by Patrick Long, and he said I could find it in the Hong Kong University Library. And to enter it, I need to commit identity fraud. But yeah, still not bad. There are a lot of really interesting books in there. And I wrote down a, a pretty, not, not a very long, but, but still nonetheless a list of films that I need to watch and I want to watch. Uh, whether it be because of the extravagant production or because it just holds such an important value in the history of filmmaking in Hong Kong. So um, yeah, cool stuff. I'm gonna head back home now and it's gonna be great. I forgot to mention that on the third floor in the library, I walked into it while trying to like keep a low profile, but still sticking out my phone to, you know, film it. And then two men in uniform approached me telling me that I can't, I can't film and that I need to delete the video right in front of them. And I actually did delete it. But little did they know, I have a... Uh, <laughs> I have, uh, I have uh, an app that, that can restore videos uh, that I accidentally deleted. But, um, and, and I don't think they, they really, like, checked if it is truly deleted or not. But, uh, yeah. Two men in uniform. Two men approached me. Jesus Christ, I thought I was gonna get executed or something. <laughs>